is on the war path against the center. They say we are generating more funds but getting a very small part of the central pie. Other states like Tamil Nadu, Kerala intend to get involved and take this battle up against the Modi government. Are the southern Indian states on strong footing? Do they have a rational case for why uh, more money is being sent to other states and not to them? Or is the opposition in its desperation to find some fig leaf to take on the Modi government trying to politicize and complicate an issue which is based on hardcore financial logic. We'll look at all of that and more on tonight's edition of the News Track. South Front fight reaches Delhi. Karnataka Chief Minister leads protest in capital. Tamil Nadu, Kerala also claim bias. Prime Minister Modi slams to vice of politics. North versus South fund fight is the big focus on news track. Before we dive into the show, let me take you through the headlines I'm tracking tonight. Uttarakhand becomes the first Indian state to implement the Uniform Civil Code. The UCC bill is passed in the Assembly. Rajasthan to bring in the UCC draft in the next Assembly session. Prime Minister Modi launches another blistering attack at the Congress, accuses the Congress of being anti-development and anti-backward classes, calls Rahul Gandhi a non-starter. Yuvraj ko ek startup bana kar ke diya hai. Abhi wo non-starter hai. Na to wo lift ho raha hai, na wo launch ho raha hai. BJP-led NDA alliance grows ahead of the 24 polls. RLD, Telugu Desam Party and Raj Thakre's Maharashtra Nav Nirman Sena likely to join the NDA. Sharad Pawar faction will be called the NCP Sharad Chandra Pawar. Meanwhile, his nephew Ajit moves the Supreme Court to claim the NCP headquarters. Set back, Farmin Kejriwal court summons Delhi CM to appear on the 17th of February for skipping ED summons in the Likagate case. The North versus South fund fight reached the national capital today with the Chief Minister of Karnataka, Siddharamaya, and his deputy DK, Shiv Kumar, staging a protest against the centre. They claim that the people of their state are suffering because of the centre's bias in releasing funds. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman hit back saying that the Karnataka government is blaming the centre because it irrationally spent its monies on these so-called guarantees. The Prime Minister too hit out at the Congress for creating a North-South divide. <laughs> Protests rocking Delhi and Karnataka as a South Fund fight peaks. As three South states up the ante against the centre claiming discrimination in distribution of funds, Prime Minister Modi lashed out at the Congress, blaming them for creating a North-South divide. This Congress has tried to put a lot of देश को तोड़ने के नैरेटिव घटना के का नया शौक उनको पैदा हुआ इतना तोड़ा कम नहीं है अब उत्तर दक्षिण को तोड़ने के लिए बयान दिए जा रहे हैं the Prime Minister also explained in detail why some states get more in the country and warned against dividing India on state lines हिंदुस्तान के किसी भी कोने में दर्द हो तो पीड़ा सबको होनी चाहिए अगर देश 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 का एक कोना अगर शरीर का एक अंग अगर काम नहीं करता है तो पूरा शरीर अपंग माना जाता है शरीर जिस प्रकार से अगर देश का भी कोई कोना 
देश का कोई क्षेत्र विकास से वंचित रह जाएगा तो देश विकसित नहीं हो सकता है और इसलिए हमें भारत को एक अंग अंगांगी भाव से देखना होना चाहिए उसको टुकड़ों में नहीं देखना चाहिए देश के अंदर ये भाव तोड़ने का क्या प्रयास हो रहा है क्या इस प्रकार से देश को हमारा टैक्स हमारे मनी किस भाषा में बोला जा रहा है ये देश के देश के भविष्य के लिए नया खतरा पैदा करने वाली है Prime Minister Modi's attack at the Congress was timed to Karnataka Chief Minister Siddaramaiah's symbolic protest in Delhi. Hitting the streets of the capital, the Siddaramaiah cabinet came together in full strength to protest against what they called stepmotherly treatment by the central government. Speaking to India today, the Karnataka Chief Minister demanded that Kannadigas get their fair share from the center. She in 14th Finance Commission whatever the yardsticks are applied the same yardsticks should have been applied in the 15th finance commission also why they have but changed this because earlier the so far as the population is concerned they have to consider the 1960 1971 pop census in this 15th finance commission 2011 census is considered So you're being penalized. You're being penalized for having controlled population better than the northern states. That's the concern that southern states have. That is that is what I mean. At the protest too, Sitharamaiah taunted the government, accusing Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman of lying to the people about fund release. Why are you talking about the fund release, madam? BJP however has repeatedly dismissed the discrimination narrative Karnataka BJP MPs held a protest in parliament and a dramatic one in Bengaluru too Karnataka BJP leaders were seen attempting to enter the chief minister's chamber in Vidhan Sodha We are asking for our rights it is purely our right whatever the percentage we are supposed to get we are getting only 13% we don't let the some other states also be benefited i don't mind let them give an opportunity to hyderabad telangana let them give opportunity to maharashtra let them also the same whatever the gift policies they have given uh, city policies let them go to karnataka also we will also india is an united country it is not only one one state we don't tell you don't give to gujarat you give to karnataka also main danke ki chot pe kehna chahta hu यूपीए गवर्नमेंट ने 10 साल में केवल 24,000 करोड़ साढ़े चौबीस करोड़ दिया मैं बहत्तर हजार करोड़ कर्नाटक सरकार को दी है उसके बाद भी निर्लजता के साथ देश को तोड़ने की साजिश के साथ कर्नाटक ने ये विज्ञापन दिया है मैं इसका प्रोटेस्ट करता हूं और कहता हूं कि ये झूठी सरकार साबित करे Meanwhile the state is set for this showdown to escalate as Kerala and Tamil Nadu will join the fight on Thursday in Delhi. The left in DMK leadership will stage a protest tomorrow demanding adequate release of funds. Now naale ivide Delhi ile Kerala oru savisheshamaya samaramana nadathum. Kerala tinde adhijeevanathinu munnotu pokunu. അനിവാര്യമായ മാർഗം എന്ന നിലയിലാണ് ചരിത്രത്തിൽ അധികം കീഴ്വഴക്കങ്ങൾ ഇല്ലാത്ത ഈ പ്രക്ഷോഭത്തിന്റെ മാർഗം തെരഞ്ഞെടുക്കേണ്ടി വന്നത് നോ ട്വന്റി ട്വന്റി ഫോർ ദ വോണ്ട് ടു പ്ലേ നോർത്ത് സൗത്ത് ദിസ് ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ഗെയിം ലെഫ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ദർ ഹാൻഡ് ദിസ് ഇസ് ദ ഗെയിം ദ പ്ലേഡ് പ്രീവിയസ്ലി മിസ് യൂസിംഗ് ആർട്ടിക്കൽ ത്രീ ഫിഫ്റ്റി സിക്സ് ഡിസ്മിസിംഗ് ഗവൺമെന്റ് സെറ്റ് വിൽ നോ ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ആർമറി ദറ്റ് ഇസ് ലെഫ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ദ കോൺഗ്രസ് പാർട്ടീസ് ഹാൻഡ് is saying that north is different south is different and south is not getting funds and all those things as politics speaks over funds distribution prime minister modi has claimed it's an attempt to create a divide ahead of the elections bureau report india today do the south indian states have a credible case for the protest against the center what is it that they're complaining about we're seeing the protest we're seeing the rhetoric how does this make logic financially so we'll try and get into that i want to 
welcome our guests joining me for this broadcast. Um, Tejasvi Surya is a member of parliament of the Bharatiya Janata Party, national president of the Yuva Morcha. After we've spoken to Tejasvi, we'll go across to Subhash Chandra Garg, uh, former uh, finance secretary, author, understands central finances. Malvika Vinash joins us from the BJP. Bhavya Narsimha Murthy is a general secretary and spokesperson of the Congress. Before I start this discussion, I want to just take a moment to explain to our viewers what really is going on. So here is the case that the southern Indian states are trying to build against the center. We'll get into the financial logic, but I'll try and explain what is it that they're cribbing and carping about. So I'll first take a look at how much of every rupee that each of these states uh, generates through various uh, manufacturing, taxation, all the various ways in which revenue is generated in the states, how much of it comes back from the center. That's the first uh, chart. Pay attention because there's a lot of intricate detailing involved and then we'll get into the politics of this. So, in a state like Karnataka, of every rupee that is sent to the center, 15 paise comes back. Just 15 paise comes back to a state like Karnataka, which is why Karnataka is claiming to be upset. In a state like Bihar, um, of every uh, rupee that they send, they get 7 rupees back. So they're sending much lesser to the center, getting much more from the center. That's as far as Bihar is concerned. For a state like Tamil Nadu, remember, uh, the Stalin government will also be joining the protest. For every rupee that uh, they send, for every rupee they contribute to central finances, uh, Tamil Nadu gets 0.29 paise back. So 0.29 paise you get back, that's only 30 paise out of 100, right? Whereas a state like UP, for every rupee UP sends to the center, they get 2.73 rupees back. So they're giving lesser, getting more. Uh, and the same is the case with states like Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, getting much lesser than they contribute. Whereas other states like Rajasthan get 1.33 back. So they give 1 rupee, they get 1.33 back. Bihar gets 7 rupees back. Karnataka gets only 15 paise back. That's the nub of the problem. So how is it that it is determined? Who gets how much money? That's the second chart that you see. Now, this is a very intricate formula. It's called the devolution formula worked out by the 15th Finance Commission. Without getting too dense, I just want to give you a sense of how this operates. So, this is based on the composition of each state across different criteria. So, 15% of the weightage in the determination of who gets how much money is based on the actual population of the state. So, the more populated you are, the more in the algorithm uh, that determines how much money goes to which state you stand to gain because you've got a bigger population, so you need more money. 15% um, is area, so obviously bigger states need more money, get more money, so 15% of the formula is area. Forest and ecology, how much of the state is populated with the forest area? That's 10%. Equity is 45%. Equity means, and this is the biggest category, like 45% of the determination happens on the basis of equity. Equity is income distance. So basically, in that state, how far are people in that state from the state with the highest income? So how far are people in a particular state from the richest state? That is 45%, which is why you saw states that are poor, like a Bihar or Uttar Pradesh, get much more money from the center than the richer states. So then tax and fiscal effort. So how fiscally prudent are you? How much tax are you mopping up? That is also given weightage, but that's much lesser, just two and a half percent. Demographic performance is 12 and a half percent. This has been added after pressure from the southern states. Demographic performance means to what extent have you been able to control the speed at which your population is growing? That gets 12 and a half percent. But the reason that the poorer states get more money is largely because equity is 45% of the weightage, which means how far are people, how far is that state from the richest state gets half the weightage, which is why the poorer states get the most amount of money. I want to show you two more charts before we get into this conversation. So here you see how the contribution um, in the overall central pie for some of the South Indian states is coming down. So in the 10th Finance Commission, Karnataka had 5.34% contribution out of all the money that was being sent, 
5.34 was coming to Karnataka. In the 11th Finance Commission, it came down, 12th Finance Commission came down further, 13th it came down further. By the time of the 15th Finance Commission, it came down to 3.65. Out of every 100 rupees that are getting distributed at this moment, Karnataka is getting only 3.65 rupees. In the 10th Finance Commission, they got 5.34. This doesn't look like a big amount right now, but just imagine when it's thousands of crores, every decimal makes a big difference. Kerala used to get 3.88% of every 100 rupees in the 10th Finance Commission. That's now come down to 1.93. So big drop in the case of Kerala as well. Uh, whereas in the case of a Tamil Nadu, for example, from 6.64, the amount of money that Tamil Nadu is getting out of every 100 rupees that the centre is spending is now only 4.08. Whereas other states, like take for example in Uttar Pradesh, and I've got that here as an example, Uttar Pradesh is kind of where it was, 17% earlier, 17.94% uh, now. So 17.81 in the 10th Finance Commission went up to almost 20% in the 11th Finance Commission and is still about 18% in the 15th Finance Commission. So while the South Indian states are getting more money, but that's also because the economy is growing, so naturally you'll get more money. But when you look at the percentage that they're getting out of every 100 rupees that the center is spending, the South Indian states are complaining that the amount of money that they're getting as a percentage is actually coming down. That's at the nub of the problem. So with all this uh, said and done, I now want to kickstart this conversation. Hopefully you have a better sense of the issues at play. Tejasvi Surya, you come from Karnataka and I just showed and I'll have that out on our screen again, the data for Karnataka which shows that Karnataka's state of uh, share of states in taxes has come down from 5.34% in the 10th Finance Commission to 3.65% now. And your Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister are saying this is unfair just because we are doing a better job of uh, managing our finances, managing our demography. Therefore, we are being penalized against states like Bihar, like Uttar Pradesh, which are not doing as good a job. And this is unfair to South Indian states like Karnataka. How do you respond to all that's being said and done? Tejasvi Surya. Good evening, Rahul. Um, I will take a, a couple of minutes to address this uh, uh, argument that has been put forth by the Chief Minister. It's a two-pronged uh, uh, argument that he has made. First, we must understand that the Finance Commission is a constitutional body, it's an autonomous body, and the central government nor the state governments have uh, any kind of sway over it. The Finance Commission has certain terms of reference which it arrives at and then holds extensive con consultation process all over the country and then arrives at the figures that it arrives at. So first of all, the whole attempt to politicize the whole um, uh, uh, argument by saying that the Narendra Modi government is not giving Karnataka its just and due um, funds is is, is based on falsehood because the Finance Commission is a constitutional body, first thing. Second, I agree that with respect to Karnataka, one of the reasons why there is a decline in the percentage of devolution, even though there has been a consistent increase in the total quantum of money that the state has received, the reason why uh, uh, there has been a decline in the percentage that you have showed in your chart is because of the equity the 40% weightage that is given to equity. Now let's compare to 14th Finance Commission. In 14th Finance Commission, the weightage to population was 17%. In the 15th Finance Commission, it has been reduced to 15%, which is good in so far as the states which have reduced population is concerned. Second, you also made, po made the point that the 12.5 percentage point that is being given to demographic performance is also uh, to make this whole income distribution more equitable. Now the point about equity is where Karnataka has, uh, has to make uh, a more uh, 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 vigorous argument at least before the 16th Finance Commission because Bengaluru has the highest per capita income among all cities in the country whereas even districts just around Bengaluru which is Bengaluru rural which is um, 
uh, you know uh, chikbalapura which is you, you know our kalyana karnataka many of these have abysmally low per capita incomes but the finance commission takes the per capita income of the state overall and because of uh, the uh, disproportionately high uh, a per capita income of people in bengaluru the per capita income of the state of karnataka is reflected very uh, no, this in, is, in a very if, uh, if siddaramaiya uh, or dk shiv kumar were listening to this surya they would this, say that this is exactly what we are saying that because bengaluru or hyderabad are so rich they pull no, karnataka no, no. and second. telangana up Uh, that, make it seem as if it's more second. equitable, but equitable uh, is not true because there's a lot of inequity in the districts. They'll say, "Hey, no, no, who rahe? should? Who, no, no, one second, one second, Rahul. This argument should be made before whom? This argument should be made before the Finance Commission. And Finance Commission came to Karnataka to hold these consultations in 2019. They were here for three full days." And these, the, there were six ministers who are now part of the very same Congress government today. who were ministers even then they did not make this argument at that time they should have perhaps told that the state government you should have taken per capita income based on the districts of karnataka not karnataka as a whole because bangalore has a higher per capita income this should have been made that time no how do you know it wasn't so made maybe it was maybe they can argue the because the 15 point, finance commission no, no, was ultimately uh something no, which no, is appointed second, Rahul. by Rahul, by the center the therefore it have... ruled against them and against the south indian states the fact is it's an emotive topic they just we and they've got uh, or at least they are attempting i do not expect rahul i do not expect you to be rahul one second please i do not expect you to be making a statement similar to the congress party spokespersons the finance commission is not appointed by the central government the cent it's a constitutional body under article 280 of the constitution it's an autonomous body therefore it does not function as per the whims and fancies of the central government whichever party be in power this is the first position the second point is let me tell you the politics behind this whole thing let me take a minute to explain the politics behind this whole thing i have put an academic point on why the karnataka share has reduced with respect to the equity uh, uh, terms of reference but the politics behind this is something that is very devious which is mischievous and also illogical and dare i say also unconstitutional one right after the state government came to power they realized that it is impossible for them to foot the bills of the freebie politics that they had promised the guarantees that they had uh, they had promised they had promised 10 kgs of rice they couldn't deliver it they started blaming the center they created a false bogey that the central government is not giving them the additional 5 kg of rice when even before the state elections took place all states were barred from procuring it from the godowns and only open market procurement was the only way possible next dk shiv kumar a few months ago says that karnataka will see no development this year because they have no funds because 40000 crores has to be set on a set aside for guarantees fulfilling the freebies a few weeks thereafter the economic advisor to the chief minister says we need 58000 crore of rupees to fund the freebie politics it is in this context that a state which just 7 uh, 8 months ago under bommai's leadership had given a 40000 surplus budget is now con co constructing this drama that karnataka is not getting its due this is the politics this is the context in which this argument is being done the second argument that they have done which is against spacious is this my tax my right now you showed that we the the government of india is spending from the uh, tax uh, that is collected from the revenue that is generated a large portion goes to bihar a large portion goes to some other states where per capita income and the developmental indices are much much uh, behind the same argument if you extend to karnataka bengaluru contributes 55% of the state's revenue should i as member of parliament of bengaluru going by the very same my tax my right logic should i demand that all the revenue that is collected in bengaluru must stay and it must be utilized only for bengaluru and not to other aspirational districts of karnataka like raichur kalburgi kalyana karnataka like bijapura is this an argument that can also be taken ahead and if you extend this another uh, 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 you know uh, much further at the level of individuals can tax payers who are paying the highest tax lap 30% slab big industrialists who are paying large amount of taxes can they say we must get benefits proportionate to that can you run a country like this so this whole argument that my tax my right and that we need a separate southern nation is devious 
it is unconstitutional because it is against the principles of cooperative federalism okay so here's and the point these are what you're saying that the, is what you're saying the, is these logical were made by the ultimately Modi government. taxes these taken are from the rich the to help country. the poor the, these but are the fact also is they just we that at that this time in, that are in rahul one second yes at this time the opposition Sorry, has ahead, no issue right they've been uh, floundering around the india alliance is you know just capitulating they've got nothing they found what they think is one issue here they are trying to show that we are paying more taxes we are getting much lesser and they're trying to build an emotional spin out of it so that's the challenge and you come from uh, you know bengaluru the argument no, you no, made no, no, also Rahul, makes the point that they should get more because it's it's not right bangalore contributes more several of the districts in karnataka are very poor and therefore they're trying to capitalize on that emotion to try and stitch some kind of a campaign that's the challenge the bjp faces now tejasvi well rahul the people of the country understand and see through this devious politics of the congress party i can assure you that the majority the responsibility that the country's common voter the arm voter has towards the country is far far higher than the average congress party worker so they see through this politics of division and it's not that the uh, uh, states which were doing well are not taking uh, a, a larger uh, share of the uh, tax burden this is not that uh, it has started only under the modi government this was something it was a practice that was there under the manmohan singh government it was the practice that was there uh, earlier when nehru was the prime minister when indira gandhi was the prime minister when rajiv gandhi was the prime minister because ever since the uh, 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 enactment of the constitution the principles of devolution are pretty much the same so it's not that uh, this whole devolution the uh, the principles of devolution was uh, devised by the uh, modi government just 10 years ago and that the southern states are uh, uh, um, you know being subject to some kind of a uh, injustice just in the last 10 years and and if maharashtra which pays a higher tax than karnataka is not making this argument if delhi which pays higher tax than karnataka is not making this argument then you can very well understand why only the congress party from karnataka is making this argument and let me also tell you rahul let me take just 30 more seconds and tell you that these arguments that they are making is also not just illogical but are also false for example their first argument is that the finance commission recommended a special grant to karnataka to the tune of 5400 crore rupees i went through the whole of the finance uh, commission's uh, document which is around 500 pages long not a single sentence in the final report of the final fi uh, finance commission recommends any special grants to any state whatsoever leave alone karnataka but the uh, congress government today has taken out a full page advertisement in all newspapers in the country stating this lie then they have said the state has not got gst compensation the state has received 1 lakh crore of gst compensation it is the only state in the country which has no dues from the central government in so far okay. as gst devolution is concerned okay so they we have again they have again made this lie in, 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 using tax payers money to misguide tax payers the third lie that they have made is that whimsically and all of a sudden the central government stopped gst compensation after 5 years you know that the gst act mandates that compensation from gst has to be paid the gst compensation has to be paid to states only for 5 years this was a mandate of the law even uttar pradesh will will not get uh, will not get gst compensation henceforth nor will gujarat get so how is there uni how is karnataka being uniquely uh, uh, treated uh, and uh, okay uh, 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 exceptionally you know uh, uh, just injustice is being meted out then the other point that they have made today is that they have asked for drought relief and karnataka has got zero they have actually said this they have said karnataka has got zero rupees under the finance commission devolution itself 12000 rupees is year marked as funds for drought relief for disaster relief and around 6000 crores has already been devolved and been released to state government and then they take out an advertisement okay using taxpayers money lying to the taxpayer that we have not got any money 
So okay. the questions that you must be asking is one, why is the Congress party making this devious, anti-national, anti-constitutional, my tax, my right kind of an argument? Second, when the Finance Commission has not made any special recommendation, why is it that they are lying through their teeth and taking out large advertisements? Three, when Karnataka has received GST compensation, there is no due from the central government with respect to GST. Why is it that they are lying again? When all states' GST compensation has incurred cessation, has stopped after five years because it is mandated under the GST law, why is it that they are lying? Fifth, when the Finance Commission has already devolved 12,000 or earmarked 12,000 odd crore rupees for disaster relief and of which 6,000 crore rupees odd has already been released to state government, why is it that they have taken out an advertisement okay. lying again that Karnataka has got zero rupees for disaster relief? Tejashwi Surya, we leave it there. Thank you for joining us and setting up this conversation. I want to go across now uh, to people who've been involved in actually looking at how the center manages its finances. Uh, Subhash Chandra Garg, this is a clearly political issue. Now, it's also an emotive issue because when you tell someone in Karnataka or Kerala, you show them this data, it looks unfair that you're contributing more. It goes to states like UP and Bihar. Obviously, in the larger national picture, there is an argument that you take from the rich, you give to the poor. But outside Bangalore, outside Hyderabad, there's enough poverty. They'll say this is unfair. And now the opposition, which is looking for some issues, is trying to capitalize on this. What do you make of this demand? How do you explain the logic of the formula? And how do you think this is likely to play out? Subhashkar. So Rahul, uh, there, there are three kinds of resources which uh, the central government... Okay, I don't like plans. the audio connection. Give us a moment. We'll try and fix that. Let me in the meanwhile go across to Shankar Ayya. Shankar, you know, we're seeing how these South Indian states started with Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu next. They're making this issue. In the South, there is traction. I can see the responses. People feel, yes, these guys have a point. In the larger national picture, it makes perfect sense. You take from the richest states, you give to the poor. But there is poverty across Karnataka, across Telangana, which is not incorporated. But any formula is contentious and the Finance Commission is a highly complex exercise. You say, my tax, my right, you try and simplify what is a very, very complicated exercise. What are you making of the politics? Well, it's clearly politics. But there is a love that is there, which is states which have done well have reason to feel aggrieved because the formulation is located still in the 70s and 80s. There has been some improvement in the last finance commission where they created uh, some relief for demographic performance. But if you look at the equity picture, what, what is the story here? Does the finance commission's weightages creates incentives and disincentives. Does it create incentives for states or disincentives for states on the base of the performance? When you look at the GST revenue, what does it reflect? It reflects a state that has that is growing, that creates jobs, that creates incomes, that creates consumption, that consumption translates into taxes. Now, this aspect is what militates most of the people in the southern states. Because when you see the what you showed, a very well illustrated uh, graphic at the beginning of the program, that shows the reason for the uh, anger. And that anger, again, Rahul, is reflected across the districts, not just in Bangalore. The poorer people in Gulbarga or in other uh, districts will feel that why is our money going there? And that is a normal thing. This happens in families, it happens in corporates, it happens in institutions. The point is that the Congress actually scores the self-goal first before it scores a goal. So this whoever was the person who said about the secession has done a huge disservice to the cause. Now this issue about devolution should be debated. They could argue it in many ways. I think that the finance, uh, new finance commission under Arvind Panagariya should look at the weightages. It should create an incentive for job states which create more jobs and better incomes. It should create an incentive for improvement in equity, improvement in income. It is not enough to say that our state has a lower per capita income. I mean, if people start comparing 
the per capita income i mean if bihar were to present the per capita income of shevhar which is under 20000 rupees as the basis for the transfer of funds and nitish kumar as recently as in november or december asked for a special uh, category state status so this is going to play out every 5 years this happens and this happens because there is a built in inequity in the weightages the way they are created i think a better way would be to first take the say aspirational districts create a separate grant for that create a separate incentive process for states who do better in terms of per capita income growth they should create a special status for states who deal with climate change again i think the problem is that the congress party is incapable of putting an argument with any reasonable clarity okay should let bavya narsimha murthy respond to this parliament? yes bavya now here's the argument that uh, uh, thank you they just we made shankar is also making the same thing that you have to go to the finance commission this is a very complicated exercise on emotional exercise of course there is some totally logic agree. to what can be argued you can argue I at the totally right agree. forum rather than coming out and arguing on the streets because you're getting people charged up uh without them being fully able to comprehend the financial logic behind the decision okay so i would like to first remind tejasvi surya that it was karnataka people who has voted him and sent him to parliament to represent them his love for his party has totally uh you know made him blind towards the people of karnataka i would like to counter all the five or six arguments that tejasvi just first point yes finance commission is a constitutional body it's an independent body but then the same finance commission observed how karnataka there was injustice towards karnataka because they reduced the percentage from 14 finance commission to 15 finance commission for from 4.7 to 3.6 through which karnataka incurred a loss of 62000 crores so the finance commission suggested that we get a special grant of 5 5490 crores so when they themselves have suggested this why doesn't the government agree with this and give us the special grant that the finance commission suggested yes they can't intervene in the percentage the change in percentage and all that is fine but when the finance commission has suggested we should be getting this much uh, 5490 crores every year why haven't they given us that one second you know uh, he was talking about the drought and the flood relief in 2019 bjp government in karnataka under mr yadurappa he himself went and asked for some relief for the floods that occurred back then we never got any relief back then and now when the drought has happened a cabinet committee appointed by them comes to our karnataka they inspect according to their report we have incurred a crop loss of 35000 crores and they suggested that karnataka deserves 17000 crores from ndrf which we haven't still got now let's talk about gst compensation that tejasvi surya said yes it was only um, meant for 5 years we totally agree but the reason gst compensation was given was because after the gst implementation the rise in our um, taxation tax collection reduced from 15% to 9% even today our tax collection is 9% that compensation was given to the states to cover up the loss that the states occurred right but it doesn't mean we have uh, they stopped giving us the compensation in the month of june of 2022 but after that we requested them for the compensation because our tax increase the percentage tax increase is okay. still at 9% okay so let me go across to subhash chandra garg mr garg looked at like in particularly from the lens of karnataka or kerala or tamil nadu there will be an argument that's being made zoom out look at the national picture states like up bihar need support with somebody in gulbarga or mandya will never fully appreciate or understand or accept now this is a very tricky situation how do you see the finances and the politics play out from here see rahul finance commission has a built in bias in favor of the poor states our our system of allocation of central taxes from center to the states 
and then distributing it between the states is designed to favor first number of, uh, to the to the states as such you get more share from the center to the states for uh, all of them together and thereafter for the states amongst the states you take it to the poorer because the whole are the basis of no but how do you then respond to the argument that karnataka is not equally rich as a uh, uh, city like bangalore skews karnataka's metrics makes karnataka look rich where there are so many backward districts in karnataka which kind of get pulled up wrongly that, that, uh, because of karnataka's uh, income no that argument is not really valid because bangalore's income is available for the karnataka as a whole so even if you have some poorer districts the uh, the higher income from another district is available to the state for the state's work so that argument now, is how is the income extent. available if people are paying taxes the money goes to the center it's not available to the state if they want no, 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 to no, no. spend state, it in a poorer district state, states also get taxes no cgst comes to the state that is the income of the state so states taxes are available to the states income no, but they're talking about central taxes yeah they're talking about That's how correct. the central so pie is, is what, divided they're not talking about state taxes right now that is what i what i was explaining central taxes since our constitutional system is that the center collects more taxes than what it needs and the states collect less taxes than what they need together uh, the the most progressive taxes like the income tax and the uh, the, uh, the the uh, the gst is with the central government most of them and therefore this whole system was designed and population we uh, uh, the poverty those define the needs of the state so in principle there is no real argument to say that the the uh, the constitutional system should work more in favor of or should it cannot because this is not just the constitutional system this is the basis of economic decision making where you take from the rich and you give to the poor and the fact is you tax the rich to fund the economic development of the poor that is at the so nub of all economic let me, decision making let me explain yes. let me explain the, uh, the because the, the there is another aspect which is where perhaps the karnatak has a has a uh, has an argument there are two kinds of changes which the central government has made in last uh, couple of years uh, practically in last last 10 years after the 14th finance commission had made a recommendation to transfer 42% of the share of central taxes to the state number one the central government in a way uh, sort of re re reworked that formula by keeping the petroleum taxes the tax on the petroleum products uh, in the form of ses and um, surcharges and also increase the surcharges on the income tax which is not distributed so effectively the the central taxes which should have gone to the extent of 42% today are only going only up to the extent of 32% okay that's a very yes. important point you've just made let malvika avinash respond to it because if the 15th finance commission is the basis of all responses from the bjp the 15th finance commission argued that 42% of central uh, taxes central funds should go to the states you tweaked it to keep petroleum away which means that only 32% are actually sent to the states now if you allowed for that 10% extra to go karnataka kerala tamil nadu all states would have more money including states like up and bihar but because you want to keep the control of funding at the center you are not even doing what the finance commission said respond to subhash garg uh, good evening i have heard everyone and it's been a long conversation you've had with all of them let me first brief you on the politics that is getting played no here. let's talk about the finances much less seen the politics play out all day i'm talking about the finance respond to the specific question you've been asked the finance commission said 42% of the central revenue should be given to the states as devolution you tweak that formula in fact, from the, the finance has commission been increased to 42% all arguments you're making in fact the devolution has been increased to 42% it has been increased to 42% by the modi government here we have a bunch of liars who are parading in delhi in the garb of being representatives of karnataka mr sidramaiah is lying mr dk shivkumar is lying mr suresh is lying all of them are lying 
And these lies are being carried forward by this young spokesman of the Congress party. No, I am asking there about a point made by Subhash Chandra Garg, who is a former finance secretary, understands central finances far better than any of us. He's made a very important point. I want to respond specifically, Malvika, to that. The devolution has increased to 42% is what I am saying. No, but that's Does the argument, argument that he's that making, that? that the Finance Commission wanted that it be increased to 42%, but the centre tweaked that. Let Subhash Gar explain it again. The centre tweaked that to keep uh, cesses away, to keep uh, petroleum away, as a result of which the states actually get only 32%. You're not even doing what the Finance Commission said, Mr. Gar. That's what you're arguing? So, that's effectively 42% of the, uh, the central taxes other than the cesses and the surcharges is to be distributed. So if you increase cesses and surcharges, which the government has done, you effectively reduce 42% to what is the fact today, 32%. That is where the states as a whole have uh, sort of come Let to Malvika respond to that specific question, Malvika. You see, the cess has always been with the center. I think here the conversation is as if uh, it was the Modi government, which is the first government of free India. These have been Dr. Gar, was petroleum always with the center? Years. Or was petroleum also part of what was cess, distributed back? Cess was cess, always cess. with the center. So cesses and uh, surcharges have we always... Have not been... we, we have not invented these methodologies or no, these policies. Right? Have done, they have been in existence... Since what? independence, this is exactly, what? I think, uh, no, no, no. elucidated it at quite a length. I'm sorry that uh, we all ceased to understand what he was saying. It's been there for 75 okay. years. Dr. Gar, and Sidramaya has Dr. Dr. Gar, up, in spite of having been in power for five years before this in Karnataka. Dr. Gar, so then what's changed? What's the argument you're making? Cesses and surcharges have always been part of what the centre keeps. Explain your argument, sir. The government decides how much of cesses and surcharges to be uh, sort of levied. If a particular government increases this disproportionately, today of the excise duty on petroleum products, 92% is in the form of cess and sex, uh, cesses, not in the form of the excise duty or the VAT. Right? If it was in the form of the VAT, it would have been distributed. But if it is in the form of cess and surcharges, it's not distributed. So while it is true that the cesses and surcharges have always been there, what you do is you tweak how much of the total taxes you collect in the form of cess and surcharges. If you col collect more cess and surcharges, then you distribute effectively less. That is what it is brought okay, down. Let Malvika respond to that argument. Malvika? I think we are going back and forth on the same thing. These are matters that have been in place. And there has been so much more that the central government has given the state. Why aren't we discussing that? Why aren't we discussing the manner in which this entire devolution process has gone up by about 250% since the UPA? Why no, aren't no, we but that's because that? the economy is grown. See, the percentage of devolution will keep growing as the economy grows. It's the percentage of devolution oh, that oh, you have to look at, the quantum so, of money oh, so as economy your economy grows year on year will keep increasing. The economy has grown. No, no, no. No, no. The economy has not grown on its own. The economy has been has been growing because of good administration, because of uh, no corruption, because the government knows what it's doing and okay. has a certain Dr. Garg wants to respond to you, Dr. Garg. The They're saying we are giving more money. Dr. Gar, she argues we are giving more money, which is true, because the economy is growing, more taxes are being collected, more is being given back. So as a whole, the as amount that's being given UPA, back is much more than it was under the UPA. Dr. Gar. Where there was, there, so there where there was unbridled corruption, where there was maladministration, okay. I can go on. We Dr. Dr. Gar, we've seen what so happened are, during 2004 to 2014. So there are two more. The economy has its own. So I, huh, it's so the government which has ensured that India... Dr. Gar. So there are two more resources which the central government controls. One is in the form of the loan limits. So the states can borrow about three, three and a half percent uh, of the G, uh, GDP. Likewise, the center can also uh, um, borrow that much. Now, what is happening is for last couple of years that the states have been put under a very tight leash that you can't because it requires central government's permission. So states can't increase their borrowing. No, but which isn't a bad it's, thing, Dr. Garg, because you many of these states are no, not no. being uh, financially responsible. They're borrowing ir recklessly, irresponsibly, and it's correct to impose some discipline on them, Dr. Garg. So Rahul, the same, same standards should have been applied for the central government. 
why is central government uh, borrowing double of what is the permissible limit? Okay. And then Malvika. happily, okay. Then happily Malvika, spending. If, the, if states are being stopped from borrowing, why is the center uh, going much more than its borrowing limit? Respond to that, Malvika Vinash. I will tell you. I will tell you how much lacking the Karnataka government is, which is what... No, you're not answering the question that's being asked, Malvika. No, if no, the no, states no, no. are being stopped no, from borrowing, Dr. Speak. Garg is saying, no, why is the centre borrowing much more than its borrowing limit? Respond Allow to the specific to question that you're being asked, Malvika Allow Vinash. I need to give you a few numbers. No, you're being, you you're being asked a very specific question. You're being asked, Malvika Vinash, a very specific question. If the state... If the states are being stopped from borrowing more than their limits, why is the center borrowing more than double its limit? That's the question the former finance secretary has responded just to this question, Malvika Vinash. What about fiscal responsibility then? Does the state not have any fiscal responsibility? No, he's saying in fact, the same discipline uh, should be in enforced fact, in the center Mr. when it comes to borrowing. I violated that very fiscal responsibility act and I, that, those are the figures I was trying to give you which you are not letting me give you. I'll give you those figures. He had promised tax collection of 2,38,410 crores, which in fact is a deficit of 12,522 crores. However, he has managed to collect only 1,61,477 crores, okay. which is why, which is no, why okay. he's sitting so Shank in Shankar Aya, Shankar Aya, he has faced the state of Karnataka. How do you see this play out from here? You know, this is really a conversation to my mind that should be happening before the Finance Commission because there are pros, there are cons, there are nuance, there's intricacy involved. You and can't I have this conversation finish, on television. I'm it is way too complicated for that. But you can you can do these kind of protests like my tax, my right, and you can stoke emotion, which is what the opposition is essentially trying to do because there are very little other issues. So they're trying to stoke some emotion over here. Well, there are two kinds of compulsions playing out here. The Congress party and the other parties are facing a tough opponent in the next elections. So they have to find the narrative. That narrative, they have probably found the theme, but messed up in the execution. If they had been a little more smarter, they would have held a conference. They would have got all the finance ministers to come together, talked about a new devolution formula, taken it to the public, and made it part of the manifesto. But that requires a lot of intelligence and a lot of patience and a lot of diligence. I don't think that is anything that the opposition parties have been accused of in the last 10 years. The other part is that they are also struggling. See, the BJP has leveraged the idea of double engine Sarka. Now the opposition parties are trying to weaponize the double engine story. The problem with India's politics is economics gets discussed one month before the election, and then the rest of the 59 months, nobody discusses it. I think this is a good subject. This is a good issue to take forward to the Finance Commission. Let all the southern states finance ministers come up a devolution with a devolution formula, make it appealing to the people of the southern India, make it an election point, and then let's see how it goes. No, and also they keep in mind that the whole premise of taxation is that you take from the rich and you give to the poor you help alleviate the economic and social condition of the poor. That's at the nub of any taxation. That's why taxation but exists. Now, but you now, can't... Yes, yes. It's a yeah. process of incentives and disincentives. Now, why do we compass, Why do we improve? Uh, why do have, we have a PLI scheme? Productivity linked in incentive scheme. Why do we have corporate tax uh, uh, exemption? All of this is to make the calibration... No, so, sure, so there must be weightages growth. that are put... Better. And it must be accounted for. And of course, performance, yeah. demographic performance has already been given a certain weightage uh, of 12.5%. More such weightages can be added for economic performance. But it cannot be that the rich keep for the rich and don't give to the poor. That is fundamentally a flawed economic argument. But they have to nuance and finesse this. And I think as uh, Shankar Ayer points out, Provide a better devolution formula. You're pointing out what's wrong and how you are being wrong. But maybe the opposition could be in power in a state like Bihar tomorrow or in a state like Uttar Pradesh or say Gujarat or Madhya Pradesh. It may happen. And if it does, then you'll be at the other end. So you're arguing now because you're strong in the south and weak in the north. What if it changes someday? So these are things that need to be thought out far more deeply. We've had a good conversation, touched upon the important issues. It's not black and white, and I really deeply appreciate the kind of insight Subhash Chandragar brought to this conversation, and also Shankar Ayer, Malvika, Avinash, and Bhavya Narsimha Murthy for joining me on this conversation. Thank you very much. I'm skipping into a break as I 
We've been telling our viewers all for the past 15 days. Tomorrow, 6 p.m. is when we start with the results of the Mood of the Nation opinion poll. We'll go state by state, region by region, and then the national big picture, the last Mood of the Nation opinion poll before the 24 general election. So what is the Mood of the Nation? Find out starting at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Goodbye tonight. How many seats will the BJP get if general elections are held today? Who would you rate as India's best chief minister? Do you support the idea of one nation, one poll? Will the consecration of the Ram Temple help the BJP in the Lok Sabha elections? After Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who do you think is best suited to be India's Prime Minister? All this and more in the next edition of the India Today Mood of the Nation opinion poll exclusively on India Today TV. Your wash electronic seat by Kohler. Wish everything was this intelligent. Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics, and insights that matter. Join India today now on WhatsApp. Scan the QR code. Veda by Kola. Wish everything cared for your skin. Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics and 